everybody all this is AR Cavley welcome back to my channel for another product review another one of my product reviews I have finally gotten the proofs back actually I got them back once already but I had screwed them up so my second round of proofs I got them back for the eye of the tesseract which is a sci-fi kind of horror yeah you know, cer certainly kind of a grim dark type or a, uh, a dark sci-fi based on the tricube tales system by zadmar games so i'm going to explain it comes in three versions and well it also comes in two pdf versions as well if you're a, a digital type person it comes in a black and white format with no art. This comes in under 10 bucks, So it's a pretty good deal. Has the same information. Of course, a few, few less pages. This is the color version in soft cover. And this is the hardcover version. And this is what... This is the version we'll be using to go through and just kind of go over what I've put in this game. So around back, there's my fancy Long Shadows Press uh, logo. <laughs> um, the Eye of the Tesseract is a complete standalone RPG using the minimalist Tricube Tales rules by Zadmar Games. Thanks to uh, their very generous uh, licensing It's a grim science fiction role-playing game of mankind's battle of the unknown horrors against the unknown, unknown horrors of interdimensional space. When I made it, I was kind of thinking of Halo meets XCOM, maybe. All right, here's the, of course, the general information about the, the intro information. The first pages are the system overview. If you have the Tricube's Tales, Tricube Tales, main book then you have you have this stuff in here i don't have everything in there i uh, try not to abuse the license and i only put the stuff in there that i need and i always recommend to everybody get tricube tales main book from zadmar games if you are familiar with these uh tricube tales Character creation is very simple. You come up with an archetype, which is a quick description of whether your character is agile, brawny, or crafty as their main attribute. And then there's specialty. If you're using the main game, you know, it could be anything. It could be a spy or a paladin, whatever. In this setting, the characters play the Ubermensch. They're elite soldiers faced to train in any hostile environment. They're the power power troopers, basically. They have power uh, suits that give them perks or you know advantages. You have Titans who are the commandos. You know they're the the ground forces. They excel in close quarters combat, close quarters battle. The rangers are scouts, saboteurs, assassins, spy-type scout people. Panzer techs are pilot technicians. They Their implants allow them to better pilot and control fighters and mechs that the Ubermensch have access to, use, that uh, support their missions. Analyzers are your electronic warfare specialists, hackers, um, signal intelligence, 
cyber intrusion. They're also the ones that gather scientific data, which will become important later on when I explain that part of the campaign. And espers are very rare. They're humans with psionic talents. They are limited, even though they have their psionic abilities, they are limited in that they can't have implants that change them too much because that interferes with their psionic ability. In this version of the game, I chose to use energy and resolve to give it more of a science fiction kind of feel, aesthetic. But it works the same way. You, you spend your energy points uh, to activate perks to help you with challenges. Now, th the main piece of gear that these soldiers have, that the Ubermensch soldier is the uh, Myrmidon 5 powered armored chassis tactical, which... Uh, so cleverly turn uh <laughs> is the uh, abbreviated the impact or impact or the m5 one in really everything in this rule is optional or in these rules that go beyond what's in the base tricube tails is optional because it's a it's a fine line sometimes between adding a couple of cool changes and foundationally changing it from the very cool system that is Tricube Tales. But in this, I put a little more detail into the gear. Your armor has hard points. It starts off with one hard point, but you can increase those. And those hard points act as mission-specific perks. So you can activate them. Not only do they give you, you know, narrative functions, they also allow you to spend your energy to activate the perks that they grant. As the campaign goes on, you can advance your research. You start off with a standard armory, and these are, they're basically just uh, narrative tools, right? You know, you've got a vibro blade and your flamethrower and whatnot. Typical kind of space marine weapons. And then when you get advanced research, then you can use those as extra perks that you can activate or even more powerful perks that you can activate. And so you have weapons, defensive systems, and in some missions you may be required to have a particular hard point filled out or have a particular piece of equipment in your hard point. So and you have communications, miscellaneous, Esper upgrades, because at with the Esper upgrades, you gain those later on because Psionics is still a very rare and mysterious ability. But as humanity is infused with the uh, strange energies inside of this Tesseract, what, what's commonly called the glow because it's all glowy green everywhere, like being in a big green nebula. They, you learn different things in here. When you have your advanced research, you can start adding psionic upgrades to your armor, even for people that aren't psionic. There's your typical advancement rules, some ranks. Every time you increase, you can you get a rank. Again, more flavor than anything, but uh, also for narrative and gameplay, because... You know, the sergeant gets to, uh, you know, order around the other guys. And if you're familiar with the game rules, 
this the the rest of it is pretty much the same defeat afflictions here's some cool artwork the artwork is from the stars without number art pack uh, graciously provided by kevin crawford you can get that free and use it as long as you give proper attribution and some ideas on the type of injuries and afflictions you might get in the glow people undergo corruption and sometimes if depending on how you earn an affliction or a condition it may turn out to be a, a, a an unfortunate mutating effect on your body there are four combat styles uh, as I mentioned, close quarter battle, that's melee weapons and short range uh, weapons, Me uh, firearms, shotguns, flamethrowers, marksmanship, those are your longer range, your electronic warfare, that's hacking, jamming, that kind of thing, and your psionics. Here's a discussion of how to use some optional ranges and zones and what kind of weapons would be best in those zones. And trying to use them outside of those zones might increase the difficulty. Vehicles like armor, they have different hard points, and you have a standard hanger and an advanced hanger. As the campaign goes on and you earn more research levels, you can add new things, new perks to those vehicles. And here's a list of types of vehicles. Some APCs, some tanks, Starfighter, some mechs, drop ships. Here's a discussion on the different types of toxins. The soldiers are a division of the Ministry of Man, which is very advanced. So a lot of the common type diseases have already been wiped out, but there are some strange effects that the energies are having on not only people, but the bacteria in them. So they may come across some new strange thing that they don't know how to cure right away. And in fact, as, as I've said, you go, as a campaign pr progresses, you decide where to spend these research points. And sometimes you may want to spend them on curing certain corruption afflictions or certain diseases. Here's a quick couple page discussion of the Ministry of Man, the campaign in the Tesseract, uh, Unity, that's the name of the ship that uh, you go in on. Here's some division officers just for some just for some background. And here's a squad generator, which is pretty cool. The squad, if you want to fill out your squad, depending on how many people you have, the squad can act, well, <laughs> kind of like a high casualty buffer zone for your main characters. A typical squad consists of six members, six members in their power suits. And... Uh, if you're doing solo or if you're playing with maybe one or two people and it's a high threat environment, then maybe you have some NPCs that can soak up some hits for you. Now they're narrative and they're not characters, so they don't get to soak up as many hits. They pretty much would act as a single, <laughs> a single hit in those kind of situations. So you can watch your poor fellows get torn to pieces or blasted apart by the alien menace. Here's a uh, to come up with squad call signs. 
and the specialty if you want to randomly dis assign your squad mates, your NPC squad mates. And then here's some NPC tags. And whenever whenever tags or any information like this comes up, I always suggest people look at Zab at the at Zadmar Games solo product for um Tricube Tales because it it has a lot of it's a, a lot of good tables in it for solo play and just for GMs who want to fill things out, you know, random encounter tables and whatnot. And they are available now in large uh, cardboard sheets, and they have more information on them. So when you go looking, you can get those, and they're they're good quality. The colony that you are sent to investigate is in the uh, uh, Psy Serpentis system, one of the farthest colonies. And within the Tesseract, which is where you go, that's where you end up going because the, the entire solar system has pretty much gone in there. You find pieces of planets and star bases cut up, lifted, sometimes whole. There's kind of a randomizer. But this list talks about the types of planets that are in the system. These are the pieces of, the remnants of, the survivors of, what you might find. But it's very, it's set up so that the, because of those strange energies and strange rules in the Tesseract, you might come across a part of a planet that's been sliced out like a piece of cake. And everything is normal on that piece of cake. And if you look over the edge, You'll see the lava. You'll see, uh, you know, maybe you'll see other pieces of cake of that planet that you might have to jump across, or it might be sliced, and you might have to go up. Now, travel in the eye is difficult because, like I said, it's a big green nebula, and it's hard to navigate. And the campaign, you basically you do missions in certain sectors you have to clear them out and then set up a nav beacon so that you can go on to the next place without getting lost here's a couple pages of Threats, environmental threats, creature threats. Ooh. And for all of you familiar with the other Tricube Tales one-page one adventures, you know, it's basically a short mission generator that talks about the, lo you know, what you're to do, the location, and who you're facing. This mission generator is basically that for inside the Tesseract. Determine the goal or goals if you want multiple. Determine location, roll the terrain status, and generate one or more mission complications. So you have a goal, locations, and then here are the terrain types that you will end up running across. You could be anywhere from coming across a, I called it an Escher scape, but a, a colony that when you walk across it, it, you know, things change like an S, uh, MC Escher drawing. And then it makes it hard to keep track of where you're at. Gravity and uh, is not constant. Could be wastelands or slices, shattered. And then here are complications. Once you complete a mission successfully, there are mission reward tables, and you can gain intel, cache, research, and, or have a discovery. Now, the intel gives you some 
some skill bonus rolls or bonus rolls on on the upcoming missions a cache uh or cash maybe it's supposed to be cash <laughs> i think i pronounced it one way for a long time and then it was corrected but it's been a long time so i just call it a cash um a cash of ammunition batteries it lets it gives you extra energy basically on the next mission now research as you gain research one you know it's you know th this is one of the uh, roles that the um the cyber people fulfill is that they help they increase they have a better chance of of uncovering research and this this is what you use to buy those extra perks you know that might cure a particular disease or open up uh, some equipment for you and then discovery the main goal of the campaign is to find out what happened to the colony what happened to your sister ship the sovereign and what happened to the crew that was sent before you there are 15 discoveries no looky there are 15 discoveries that you make as the campaign goes on and you have to kind of go through them before you can basically find and learn how to defeat the bad guy and get out of there and there are also artifacts that you can discover and some of them are one use some of them are multiple use some of them are uh not friendly or happy <laughs> things to happen some of them are really cool and there is a discussion about how to end the campaign and a menacing blown apart uh, spaceship here is a at the very end of what essentially ends up being a 54 page product i kind of put i put a one page rule summary and mission generator tables just so that they're kind of conveniently in one place so you don't have to flip back these are the the four that i think you end up using the most and then character creation and a quick one page if you just want the very basic way to run the game you can run the whole game off of this although in a couple spots here i forgot to change karma to energy but it's the same and then a couple blank templates for you you to use and that is my new game it's available on drive through rpg i will go ahead and put some links down at the bottom uh, some affiliate links which don't cost you anything to use and they kind of uh, can help a brother out with a little extra money thank you for watching thank you for showing some interest and i hope that you will buy and enjoy this product and I have other products on the Long Shadows Press. If you look for Long Shadows Press, and I have uh, several of them are for Tricube Tales, so I hope that you'll check those out as well. And thanks for coming along. Happy gaming.